Hello guys, my name's John, I'm the Geeky Fanboy, and welcome back to Game of Thrones Reviews, Season 8, Episode 3, The Long Night. Uh, it's finally here, the big battle, and again, I'm gonna talk spoiler-free for the first two or three minutes, just to give you a general uh, impression of what I thought about the episode, and then I'm gonna jump straight into spoilers, but I'll give you a warning beforehand. So, overall thoughts on the episode. I thought it was alright. I did not like it as much as last week's episode, but I thought for a battle episode, it, it worked pretty well. Um, the cinematography and everything was mostly okay, though sometimes it was a bit hard to like follow the action of what's going on uh, on the battlefield, because sometimes the editing just didn't work and I was like just stop cutting away from things I want to know what's happening and sometimes it was also just too dark to see anything also they had this thing when it was not only said during the night time they also have like a snowstorm ashes everything kind of falling over the battlefield so it was sometimes hard to see what was actually going on which was a bit sad because Usually Game of Thrones does battles quite well, not not like brilliantly, but usually they're quite entertaining to watch. So that was a bit sad at times. I was just wondering what the hell is going on right now? I have no idea who's where or who we're following right now. So that was a bit sad. Um, also, um, strategy-wise, um, we know that's not Game of Thrones' priority when it comes to battles. So strategy and everything, eh, not, not that much, but I think it's still one of the better battles Game of Thrones has done, uh, I'd say. What I thought was very good uh, was definitely the opening minutes of the episode, so the first 10-15 minutes are very, very tense and you, and you can feel the suspense and the tension and uh, I, I I actually got a bit of the shivers when the episode started, and the music is so good, especially during the beginning. It's it's like very subtle, but you have like the bass lines and kind of drum noises coming in, and it's very subtle, but you know very heavy. And I thought it worked especially well during those opening minutes where you know it's it's kind of like the calm before the storm, but it's like this very very tense calm before the storm. So I thought that worked really well, that it definitely kept you on edge during those um, opening minutes, also throughout most of the episode, I'd say, where you really were dreading that, I don't know, everyone's gonna die. Like, seriously, I thought everyone's gonna die. <laughs> and yeah, also, again, the episode, throughout, uh, throughout the episode, the music, just very, very good, I thought, like, especially during those opening minutes, but also in general, the music worked really well in this episode, because it was very subtle, but you could feel that it did its job very, very well, and I like when you could hear uh, the melodies during, like, very tense and more quiet scenes, but in general, yeah, so atmosphere and, and all that was very good. We do also have some, I, I'm gonna call them character moments again, which I thought um, were good. Um, the episode definitely gets emotional at some points without, of course, spoiling it um, too much. Um, the episode is also quite long. I'm, I'm not sure how long, is it? 70 minutes, 80 minutes or something like that. Um, but the pacing worked, I thought. And there are some, well, not strictly speaking, twists or surprises, but the episode definitely leaves you with your mouth hanging open and you thinking, what the hell did I just watch? Whether this is connotated in a positive or a negative way, you will have to find out for yourself. So yeah, there were some developments which I thought were good, or which I thought were interesting. There were also some developments in the battle or with some characters that I thought were just plain ridiculous, weird, where I thought, how the hell did that happen? Or how the hell that, does this work? Um, maybe also just one or two little things where I thought, um, no, this doesn't really work for me, or it could have been done differently. Um, but... Overall, I still think it's an alright episode. Like I said, I didn't enjoy it as much as last week's episode, and the, uh, the episode definitely sets up a lot of things for the upcoming weeks where I'm left to wonder, okay, what are they actually gonna do now with the remaining 
episodes of this season. So those were my spoiler-free thoughts. I'm now going to jump into spoilers. So here is your spoiler warning. If you have not seen the episode yet, turn this video off now. Okay, so let's talk about all the deaths, all the battles, all the weird, weird things that happened. Um, let's talk about the deaths first, because I, the thing is, even though I did see them coming, I was still sad. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, like, obviously, um, Jorah and Theon, I, I admit I was, I was quite sad, especially because of Jorah. Like, I, I did tell my friend last week, oh, you just, you wait and see, Jorah's probably gonna die next week in the battle, and yeah. It happened, but I still wasn't prepared for it because I liked that guy very, very much. But he went down in the way I expected him to go down, like fighting for Danny by her side, protecting her. And yeah, I'm, I'm sad that he's dead. And uh, same with Theon, he died in the same way I expected him to die, like fighting for the staff, protecting Bran, even though it was a bit silly. Um... Like, his charge at the guy took, I don't know, it just felt a bit too long. Also, why didn't he just throw the spear? Um, yeah, I was I was still sad about him because I do I do like Theon as a character. And um, the little Mormon girl died as well. I thought, oh no, are you showing us a oh, oh, very explicit death of this little girl? But now they kind of, they kind of um, turn it around by having her kill the giant... Uh, as she dies, which I thought was quite neat when that happened, and um, oh, I don't remember his name. Um, the guy with the eye patch, he dies too after getting like hardcore stabbed 10 million times, and he still runs through the door before he dies. And I thought, how are you not dead yet? Um, yeah, but I didn't really care about him that much, to be honest. So, there you go. And also the Night Watch guy dies too. Didn't care about him either. I'm surprised Sam made it, but good for him. And Melisandre, the, the Red Lady, I thought was cool when she came in, even though I'm wondering where the hell did she came from? Didn't she come from the same direction as the White Walkers? But yeah, she did some cool things and then she served her purpose and died. I mean, yeah, it's a thing. It's all right. So yeah, those were definitely some of the more emotional... Uh, Moments of the episode. I mentioned some other uh, nice character moments and here I especially mean the episodes that were set in the crypt. I thought those between those moments between Sansa and Tyrion were very nice and very interesting. Um, especially like when Sansa has to ground Tyrion and tell him, no, we're here because we can't do anything. We're not the fighters and we can't do anything in this in those kinds of situations, you have to face it, we can't do anything. I like that, it was very good, and I thought it was very sweet that when, um, you know, the crypt gets attacked by all the zombies coming alive in the crypt, which, by the way, I did not think of. So, yeah, they did surprise me. Um, and they were together and, and holding, holding hands, and um, that was quite sweet. I do hope they're not hinting at something more, but I don't think they are. I just thought it was very sweet. Also, when when she said of all of all the husbands I had, you you were the best. And yeah, I mean he was. It was also especially cute because I rewatched their wedding episode the other day. And yeah, he, I mean he definitely was the best. I do have a very nice chemistry, a nice, a nice friendship. So those were some very sweet moments. Coming to maybe a bit more negative. Uh, stuff that happened in the episode. I mentioned earlier the episode that does manage to keep you on the edge of his seat and he, in the entire time you keep wondering, oh, who's gonna die? Everyone's gonna die. I, lit I literally thought multiple times while watching the episode, oh shit, this is just gonna end with everyone being a zombie now, is it? Isn't it? Um, luckily that didn't happen, but um, well, the episode did it a little too often. Now and then was, you know, threatening to kill all of your main characters, but just cutting away shortly before something might have happened, and when you come back to the characters, oh no, they're fine. So the episode did that a little too often with some of the main characters, you know, like Jamie, Brienne, the Hound, with those kinds of characters. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a cheap trick to know, uh, to like keep your attention and all that, which, you know, I get why they do it, but they just did it a little 
too often, also given the fact that none of those main characters die in the end. Like, apart from Jora and Theon, who I would consider main characters, or at least main secondary characters, all like the usual suspects, let's put it like that, they all survive. Like, Danny's alive, John's alive, uh, the Hound's alive, Aya, they're, they're, all, they're all still there. I expected the Hound to die, to be honest, in this episode, because he ran after Aya to protect her or whatever. I thought, oh, oh this is gonna be the moment the Hound's gonna die because he, you know, fights protecting Aya and then he gets killed by zombies. Didn't happen for some reason, even though I thought that would have been a good moment. I still think he might die protecting her in a later battle. We'll see if that happens. Um, speaking of main characters like Danny and John, what the hell were Danny and John even doing? Nothing. They were just flying around a bit now and then with their dragons and, you know, spitting fire in the first couple of minutes of the battle, which was good because they needed that, because it was kind of this Deus Ex Machina saving moment, you know, which had to be there, I guess. Um, but in general, nothing. Just useless. I thought. Also, those scenes in the sky where they were flying were one of like the hardest scenes to follow because of the you know the snowstorm and in, in, in general the episode being very dark. And I thought, what's going on in the sky? I can't see anything. Also, by the far uh, when when John faced uh, the the Night King, and I was like, just keep running, keep running at him and kill him. No, of course not, of course not. Oh, he stops and he's like, oh no, zombies. Ah, hate that moment. Also, later when he's back in the castle, because he got saved, of course, because it's John frickin' Snow, um, he faces the dragon, Vy Vy Vyserian, Vyserian, the blue-eyed dragon. Um, that was also just a bit weird, because you see earlier in the episode where, when the Night King comes flying with his dragon and, and the blue fire just, like a missile, explodes an entire wall of Winterfell and you're like, what the fuck? Explosion fire! And then later John faces that, dra that same dragon in the, uh, in, the, like, in the courtyard of Winterfell and he hides behind a couple of rocks. Uh, the dragon spits fire, nothing. Nothing, it gets a bit hot, nothing. Jon Snow hides behind a tiny wall, nothing happens, of course. And then there's this, there's one really weird moment where Syrian like, screeches at him, growls at him, and Jon Snow just gets up with a sword, you think, oh, now he's gonna stab him, and Jon Snow just shouts back at the dragon. You're like, what just happened? <laughs> so, yeah, that was a bit awkward. I'm also not quite sure how many dragons there are left now because I mean obviously Viserion is uh, dead we're gonna come to why in a second and you see Drogon was a Drogon flying off with all like the skellies on him but I guess he's fine because the skellies die and 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 you see Jon's dragon just like kind of tumbling down and then falling down and you never see that dragon again so I don't know how many dragons there are left now. Also, I have no idea what happened to Ghost. I was happy that you saw him in, in, in the first um, couple of minutes as the battle opened, but then he just never comes back. You never see him again. So did Ghost die off screen? Have we lost the direwolves now? I, I assume we did. Okay, let's come to the big thing, how the entire battle and the episode ends. Arya kills the Night King. Um, A, I'm glad it was Arya and not Jon Snow or Danny who killed the Night King because that would have just been typical if it had been Jon Snow. Um, so I, I'm glad that it was Arya. Even though, where the fuck did she come from? <laughs> like, they're in... They're in that... I keep forgetting what this big tree from the gods is called. I'm sorry. Um, but, like, it doesn't matter. Bran is surrounded by the White Walkers. And, you know, the Night King comes up ready to kill him. And then, out from behind him, Arya comes charging in with the dagger. And you're like, where did she come from? Did she? Because she would have had to 
kind of sneaked or ran through the, the white walkers that were surrounding them. And you're like, did no one notice that? Did no one see that? And some people suggested maybe she jumped off like a wall from behind. But then you're like, no, but the tree is in the middle of the yard. That would have, that would be quite the jump if she did that one. So yeah, no idea how she did that, but I'm glad she did it. Um, also, I thought it was kind of neat that she used a trick we had seen in an earlier episode when she fought Brienne, were kind of flipping the blade and then stabbing him. Uh, I, th I thought that looked, that looked cool. And yeah, Night King dead and all his white walkers and skellies dead too. I did not expect that they w would wrap up the whole zombie army Night King defeating thing already in this episode. But I guess they kind of have to because, you know, halfway through and now Cersei's waiting for them. I understand why a lot of people are a bit disappointed because, you know, in the end, now the Night King and all the White Walkers are dead and there are kind of, like, questions left unanswered because there was, was some build-up with what the Night King might want or what the history is or... I don't know, there were just some interesting little things here and there with the White Walkers where you kept wondering okay what do they want what's their whole deal are they are, are they alluding to something they might do and now they're all dead and 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 none, none of those questions are answered so you keep wondering that's it that's it like just dead and none of none of that cool mate interesting stuff I'm I mean admittedly there's a lot more of that stuff in the books I think I haven't read all of the books, so I'm, I'm not quite sure how much is in there, but the show did have some moments where you thought, oh, they're alluding to something with the White Walkers. Admittedly, it wasn't that much, but still, it kind of, I don't know, it kind of ticks me off a bit that, that that now they apparently are just dead and and they, they, they are just those skelly zombies who wanted to conquer the world. Which admittedly I thought was always their whole deal, but I thought there might be a bit more reasoning to why they did all that, but apparently not. So to to wrap up this whole uh, thing, I do know I complained a lot just now about, you know, character moments, battle moments, whatever. Um, but I didn't hate this episode. I already saw that a lot of people seem to dislike this episode for being, I don't know, too generic, too, I don't know, cliche or whatever. Um, and I do get it. I definitely felt the same at at some points, and um, I definitely do have problems with this episode. But nevertheless, I think it's an okay episode. Um, I did. I didn't hate it. I I liked it. I had some emotional moments. I admit, I cried a bit when some of my favorite people died, <laughs> even though I saw it coming. Um, it's a bit disappointing, I guess, in some places with some developments not happening or being or some things being wrapped up too quickly or not happening at all um but you know there are only three episodes left so i guess they're gonna like keep the rest of the season now to defeating cersei and her army even though i'm wondering how big of a battle that's actually going to be so yeah i guess they keep all of that stuff now for um, the rest of the season unless they come up with like a big twist reveal whatever thing and some skellies or white walkers or whatever are going to come back or, or I don't know what but I don't think they do that because D and D don't really they don't really double on that sort of thing so yeah I guess it's going to be classic Danny and John versus Cersei and Euron and all that classic uh stuff we know from game of thrones i'm definitely still excited of course i am also because i think the emotional weight of the battles to come are a bit bigger than the one we just had because the night walker uh the night walker <laughs> the white walkers in the end um at least how we see them in the show are just entities they're not really characters we connected with so i guess the battle against cersei is going to be a bit more emotional because um well, I'm not one of those people. I guess some people are also still rooting for Cersei because they like her as a character or they like Euron or whatever. So I guess that's going to be at least... Like, the stakes are going to be a bit higher um, 
on an, on an emotional basis, I think. So I'm still looking forward to those upcoming episodes. And of course, I'm still looking forward to seeing who's going to end up being on the throne, even though I'm still thinking that they might go for the classic route and uh, put Danny on, on the throne. But I guess we'll I guess we'll see what happens next week. So those are my thoughts on the third episode of season eight of A Game of Thrones. What are your thoughts on it? Do tell me in the comments below. Give maybe a spoiler warning. I don't know if you're gonna give away big stuff, but then you know this is Game of Thrones. Everything could be considered a spoiler. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. I hope you enjoyed this little review, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.